What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time, I am reviewing Creed 3. That's right, Adonis Creed is back once again for the first time, the third time. The third time's a charm. Or will it fall prey to the third film mediocreness? Creed is a very successful spinoff of the fan favorite franchise, Rocky, that dates all the way back to 1976 and launched Sylvester Stallone in the superstardom. Sly was a part of uh, all six Rocky films and was in the first two Creed films, but in Creed 3, Stallone is nowhere to be found. Even though Stallone is not in the film, though, his spirit lives within, within it the same way that Apollo Creed's spirit lives all throughout the Creed series. The film brings back Michael B. Jordan as the title character who has transitioned into a successful boxing management career after retiring on top. But he gets a surprise visit from an old friend. An old friend from his past named Damian Anderson, played by Jonathan Majors, who was once a very good fighter in his youth that was prime for the big time, but that was all taken off the table after he went to jail. Not even jail, he went to prison. Prison, prison is different from jail. So he went to prison, he came out and he pulls up on Adonis and is like, yo, I wanna be a part of this. I wanna continue the career that was taken from me early on. Even though I'm old, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna give it another shot. But there's something brewing beneath the surface behind that grin. Does he blame Adonis for his past? Does he feel like Adonis took his place? Does he feel that Adonis owes him? How heavily is the guilt weighing on Adonis? These are all very interesting themes that push the story forward um, in the third installment. This isn't just simply a boxing movie when the two fighters have, you know, a shallow competitive beef in the ring. The story goes deeper than that. We get a peek into Adonis's youth and what he went through as a child and what drove him to fight. The stakes are higher in the third installment. In the first film, he was he was a rich kid that just wanted to prove a point. He wanted to prove that he wasn't a mistake, to prove that he could live up to his father's legacy. In the second film, the old ghost of Rocky resurfaced and the return of Drago and his son was at the crux of that whole storyline. So it was really about kind of like Rocky's beef spewing into this new beef. So it wasn't really personal for Adonis himself. But this time, this is rooted in the childhood and the trauma the, the guilt, the, the the regret, and you know, the secrets that, that carried him throughout his life. Tessa Thompson is back as Adonis's wife, Bianca, and she's far more than just Adrian. Like she's more than just some wife on the side or just to support the hero. She has her own presence, her own career, her own dreams. You know, she's dealing with that hearing impairment. It's like she too had to transition into music management because she's not able to sing the way that she was because of her ailment. And so that's compelling right there. The family dynamic is on full display with Felicia Rashad returning as Adonis' mom and the adorable Mila Davis Kent who plays Amara, the daughter of Adonis and Bianca, who herself, shows an interest in the family career, which is, you know, boxing. Ryan Coogler directed the first Creed uh, to so much critical acclaim and box office success that that led him to get to the Black Panther franchise. And then in the second Creed, Stephen Cable Jr. came in to direct, and that was critical acclaim, made even more than the first one. And then he went on to direct the new uh, Transformers movies that are coming out right now. So now, Michael B. Jordan is making his directorial debut. And honestly, he does a good job. Directing and starring in the film is always a challenge and I feel like he did a really good job at balancing both. He gave a good performance and his directorial style was good. You would never think that it was his first time. Some of the visuals in this movie were really dope and he put a lot into the fight matches. And he was like, he was inspired by anime and it kind of shows in some of the fight sequences. And what I liked about the fight sequences in, in this Creed, and all the Creeds, it's better fight choreography. Like the early Rocky movies, Rocky couldn't block for shit. There was no defense. There was literally no defense in any of the Rocky movies. They were just taking hits. That's why he got the brain damage, you know what I'm saying? Jonathan Major is compelling to watch in this film. He plays the role, he says so many things without even saying a word that you're compelled, you're, you're interested, you're nervous, you're like, what is going on? You feel, you feel his drive. You feel like, all right, 
I feel him. Like, I feel him wanting to get back the career that he lost by going to prison. Why did he go to prison? Whose fault was it? So he has a legitimate beef and legitimate stakes in this movie that makes this movie... The fight in this movie matters more than the other Rocky movies because it's it's so deeply personal. It's like, yo, we we dealing with the past now, the motivations, everything. He has a he has a great edge on him. I liked his physical fighting style. It was something new. It was something fresh to see. I really feel like they did a fantastic job in conveying that in the ring. The fights were exciting, and even the supporting characters, the side characters. The fighter that, you know, Michael B. Jordan's character is managing. Like you care about you care about his career, Angel, and his and his momager. You care about them. It's like and his boxing manager played by Wood Harris. You care about him. It's like everybody brought something to the role and people people didn't feel like they were just along for the ride or just in the background. Everybody felt fully realized and invested. And I and I like that. This was a really good movie, man. I feel like with it grossing $58 million opening weekend, we might get a Creed 4 out of this. It grossed $58 million opening weekend, which is a record opening for the Rocky franchise. Even if you adjust for inflation, it's still the biggest opening for a Rocky franchise and the biggest opening worldwide for any sports film. Wow, kudos on your directorial debut, Michael B. Jordan. But forget all that. Y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Creed 3. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Creed 3 four saxophones out of five. It's funny, man. When you go watch that movie, man, they are in shape. They are ripped to shreds. So when you go and you take your girl fellas, it's going to make you feel like a jar of manwich when you leave there. You're going to feel like Sloppy Joe Mix when you leave the theater. Or if you're already skinny, you're going to feel like Scrawny McGee. I'm just putting that out there. They ripped the shreds. So, be ready. And then you're going to come out thinking you can box, too. You're going to be ready to box anybody that you see. They're going to be selling stuff outside of 7-Eleven. You're going to want to piece them up. But just relax, man. Just, you're not there yet. All right, y'all, that's my review of Creed 3, man. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comments section below. How did you like it? How does this stack up against the other Rocky movies? Do you think it's the best Creed? Do you think it's the best out of all the Rocky movies? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, how do you think Michael B. Jordan did as a director? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.